Greetings, you two. Have you ever played with a boomerang? They're great fun. Uh, a little dangerous, but heck, I mean, a stick that you can throw and hit yourself in the head with is pretty cool in my books. But they're not difficult to make. Uh, once you get good at it, you can crank a good boomerang out in about an hour. And, uh, well, once you've got that, then you've got some fine finishing to do, like varnish and polishing and whatnot, and that can take some time if you're a perfectionist. Well, the history of the boomerang, I guess, uh, it's actually 30,000 year old uh, technology, uh, for the throwing stick anyway, not the returning boomerang, that's a bit more recent. Uh, the pharaoh Tutankhamun actually had uh, a collection of returning boomerangs, and that was uh, about 3,000 years ago. Traditionally, branches such as this one would be used, or uh, antlers, or bones. Nowadays you can use more modern materials such as carbon fiber, or uh, particle board, birch plywood, like five ply, such as this little guy here, he's made out of plywood. Also plexiglass, lucite, things like that work quite well. My favorite is actually the, the plexiglass. plexiglass boomerang. Because, uh, I don't know, I find it's got a nice weight to it and it's very sturdy and it doesn't require varnishing or anything. So, uh, yeah, makes a nice boomerang, plexiglass. Now, most of the time when you think of a boomerang, you think of a classic big V shape such as this. But uh, it, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. They can be a lot more rounded and organic shaped, such as this one. This is called uh, Omega. Kind of looks like the symbol Omega. has some very nice flight characteristics. It'll fly out like 200 meters away from you in a nice perfect circle if you build it properly. Here's a F-orang. Kind of shaped like a letter F, if I can get it in the right orientation. Uh, here's some more organic shapes. These are from the tree branches. And yeah, here's a little three blader. This guy's kind of fun. You can make three bladers, four bladers, five bladers. You can make it just about any shape into a boomerang, provided you understand the physics behind it and uh, trial and error. <laughs> So in the course of this video, I'll be making five different boomerangs, and uh, each one of them will be a different material. But I'll be using the same uh, construction technique also, so uh, you'll see that the same uh, technique can apply to whatever shape of boomerang you want, so it's pretty versatile. The basis of a boomerang is actually the airfoil, which is this shape right here. You'll see that uh, it's got a curved top. This is the front of it anyway, this is the leading edge, and this is the trailing edge travels in this direction. As it does so, the air passes over the top and under the bottom. And because the uh, area of the top is larger than the area of the bottom, it's a longer path, the air has to actually travel faster in order to catch up with the airflow that went underneath. And the result of this is a pressure differential, which causes pressure on the bottom surface, or a suction here, depending on how you want to think about it, which pushes the thing up or sucks it up, and that's what generates your lift. Now the way we, we actually build one of these is you take a, a rectangular block, imagine this was stretched out and that would be your wing, but uh, all you do is you take the length of it, divide it by three, as I've done here, and now this point here, or here would be your, uh, the highest point of the wing, and from that point you carve off this material, curve it downwards towards this corner, and you do the same on this side. And you'll notice the trailing edge is twice as long as the leading edge and uh, ends in a nice sharp point where this one is rounded. That's basically so you don't cut yourself when you catch it. Ideally you'd want it nice and sharp but it's kind of dangerous. So here's the same airfoil shape in a longer format. Two of them actually. And the way we make this is using the same method as I just described here with the dividing it into three and then using the one-third as the highest point of the wing. So we'll divide this into three. I'm just eyeballing this. Now, this point here will be the highest point of the wing and all this here will grind down to be the leading edge and all this will be the trailing edge, which if tried to show here, hopefully you can see it pretty well. So an airplane would travel like this, 
in a straight line, and that would generate lift just fine. But because the Duke boomerang spins, it actually has to be shaped like this, so that there's always a leading edge cutting into the wind. And uh, you also have to give it a tilt, and that gives it a little bit of instability, which makes it want to change its course, which is kind of important. But as it spins, the leading edge is always cutting into the wind. And this, in fact, would be a right-handed boomerang because it's, uh, you would throw it from the right hand and it would spin in a counterclockwise direction, I suppose. If you wanted to make a left-handed boomerang, you'd have to actually flip this around. So, uh, let's see. It, it, that would be a left-handed boomerang. It's got the leading edge on this side instead. Now, these are some of the boomerangs I'll be making in this video. Now, if I want a boomerang to be symmetrical, I'll often cut out a template such as this, which you can just rotate around, and it's a mirror image. Here's another one you may be familiar with. I am Batman! And this, believe it or not, will be a template for a three-bladed boomerang. I just rotate it by 120 degrees, trace each outline onto my piece, and there you have it. And I've already traced a number of these out. Here's the three-bladed boomerang. I don't know if you can see it. It's traced in purple on this piece of clear plexiglass. There's the bat. I don't know if you can see that either. On a piece of black plexiglass. I was watching Mad Max the other day. piece of aluminum to uh, try to make it out of. This is pretty much an exact replica of the boomerang that kid had in Mad Max too. And I got a, another one of these. I basically just traced one of these out. We'll see if aluminum works to make a boomerang. I wouldn't recommend using this because it's heavy and you can make a pretty... it can kill you. So be careful. I'll also be making a boomerang out of a stick such as this. Now the way you harvest this type of stick to get a a boomerang out of it is uh, you just find a tree and you'll have a branch coming out of it like this and that branch will branch off. Now to get this, which is really like that, you just cut it here, cut the branches off at the ends, and you got yourself a boomerang shape. You just cut, cut it in lengthwise and uh, into nice thin segments and you can make boomerangs out of these. The, uh, the next step will be for me to cut these out with a jigsaw. This and the bat will be cut out uh, with a bandsaw. You can also use a jigsaw for that. We've got our, uh, our various boomerangs cut out. 
Here's the uh, the oak one. Just uh, cut from an oak branch. I've uh, rounded the edges a little bit and uh, smoothed it out, made it as flat as possible. Here's the plywood one. Same deal. Less work with the plywood because it's already smoothed out. Here's one out of white plexiglass. Rather thin, but it'll work. The bat and others, the aluminum and the other plexiglass boom racks. Just pretty much shaping these and cutting them out, we'll call that step one. So, step two will be to determine the center of gravity of this shape, of each individual shape, because each boomerang is a little different, as you can see. So each boomerang's CG is different, so the way you find it is using a tool called a plumb line, which is just a weight on the end of a string. So what you do is you hold your plumb line, and it's dangling away there, and that's always going to be a, a vertical line, pointing down towards the center of the earth. And you hold your boomerang so that it too is dangling. And uh, the center, of, the center of gravity of this boomerang will be directly below where my fingers are holding, because it's the laws of physics. So what we do is we pinch both the string and the boomerang. And uh, I'll hold it. Usually you hold it by a, a long wing tip. That way it gives you a, a good indication. And I'll draw two dots here. One on the top, one on the bottom. I'll connect those two dots with a line using a straight edge ruler. And that will give me a line that the center of gravity of this shape lies on somewhere. And by drawing a second line on this by holding the opposite wing, and again my plumb line, making sure to let them dangle. I'll draw a dot up here. Dot down here where it crosses, and I connect that line, those two dots with the, the line, and we will then uh, know where the center of gravity is exactly in a two-dimensional plane. So let's do that. Here's my boomerang. I've got my dots drawn on it. I'll just put my ruler across the two dots here. Draw a line there, and the center of gravity will be somewhere along this line. And the other two dots, which are actually on the other side of the plastic. I don't know if you can see them. But I'll draw a line there. And the connection point between these two lines, the little vertex right there, is the exact center of gravity of this shape. 